Today is the day. I'm going to be building my first ever custom built PC. Let's go over all the components. First up is the motherboard. I decided to go with the B550i Aorus Pro AX by Gigabyte. The CPU or processor I'll be using is the Ryzen 5 3600. The RAM I'll be using is 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. The storage for this device is a one terabyte Samsung 990 Pro NVMe SSD. I've got four of the NZXT Air RGB2 fans, two 120mm for the back and the top, and two 140mm for the front of the case. The power supply is a 750 watt Corsair RME series. The graphics card is the RTX 3060. And the case everything gets put into is the NZXT H210. Enough stalling, let's get into the build. So the first thing I did was unbox the motherboard. I decided to get this motherboard because the original motherboard I was planning to get hasn't been in stock in months, so I went with this one. After taking the motherboard out of its anti-static bag, I gently sat it on the top of its own box. This is because cardboard can't hold static, and it's just a generally soft area to sit it so it doesn't get damaged. I then sat the motherboard to the side and unboxed the CPU. The Ryzen 5 3600 has 6 cores and 12 threads, which is far better than the 11 year old Intel processor that I had on my old computer. Now it's time to install the CPU. Once you pull back the lever, you have to be careful. On AMD processors, there are a ton of tiny pins on the bottom that slot into all the little holes on the motherboard. If you bend one of those, then your processor shot. Now that I've installed the CPU, it was onto the RAM. The reason I went with 32GB is because many ITX boards only have two DIMM slots, which means if I wanted to upgrade in the future, I wouldn't just be able to add an extra two sticks, I would have had to replace the six I already have. So I went with 32GB to future-proof myself. Now we need to install the RAM. You see that? That little uh, dot right there? You gotta line it up. There's a longer side and there's a shorter side. Now you look at it. Does this come back? Okay. No. Now you have to crunch on each side. There we go. Now you make sure all the leaves are up. And there. So that's that's the RAM. Next thing was the SSD. After unboxing it, it was time to install it. At first, I was going to install it in the front NVMe slot, but as it turns out, for some reason, the standoff is too high, and the screw doesn't go in the screw. I I don't know what happened but it was very confusing and frustrating. I eventually decided to put it in the back NVMe slot. Not sure I recorded that though. If I did, I don't know where the clip went. Next is the CPU cooler. I decided to go with the stock AMD CPU cooler. For what I'm gonna be doing on this computer, it should cool it just enough. And I was worried about space. Since my case is a mini ITX, I didn't wanna get a, get a big tower CPU cooler and it not fit or take up a ton of space. So I went with this. At this point, I started to get a little worried. At first, when I put the CPU cooler on, it seemed like it wasn't going down far enough. I flipped it around, and it seemed to be a little better. But after I tried to screw it in, it wasn't screwing in. For some reason, a few of the screws were really high off of the screw holes, and they just wouldn't go down far enough. I felt like I was going to break it by pushing so hard to try to get them in the hole. Eventually, I did get them all in, even though it felt like I just snapped the motherboard in half. Now before I install the motherboard, I need to take out the two default fans that came with the case. This PC case is really small, so it was a little tough to install the motherboard. Once I got it onto the standoffs and made sure I lined it up correctly, I could start to screw the motherboard in. My hands are pretty big and the screwdriver I had wasn't magnetic, so I had to get the screws into the hole and then start screwing, and it was really tough. I actually had to get my mom to help since she has smaller hands. After the motherboard was put in, I quickly put the two fans on the back and the two on the front. Now it's time to get the power supply ready. I decided to get a 750 watt fully modular power supply so that I could reduce the clutter and I got a 750 watt one to make sure I can future proof myself if I ever upgrade my GPU.
after I plugged everything into the PSU, it was time to install it into the case. It was a relatively easy process, but I did find it odd how Corsair has the words on the side flipped when it's upright. I, I don't know why it's like that, but you can't really see it anyway, so I don't really think it matters. After the power supply was in, I quickly plugged all the cables in. In the videos I have, you can't really see anything, so I'll spare you the view of the back of my hand and my head. Now it was finally time for the graphics card. After unboxing it and looking at its beauty, I quickly installed it. Somehow this is the easiest part to install, but I'm not complaining. Now finally, with everything plugged in and everything installed, it was time to put the case back together, put the power cord in, and turn it on. So here it is, my brand new PC. I saved up for about a year and a half to make this, it costed around $1,500 if you're wondering as well, and it was a really fun experience. There were some stressful parts, but there's always going to be on your first time, so I understand. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you got something out of it. If you did, you can scroll down, click the red subscribe button, I'd appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.